Okay, we're gonna turn an episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff to have a really cool review for you guys from the brand Seiko. A little about them, they are founded back in 1881. They are Japanese in origin and factories throughout Asia. They cover all market segments from entry level to high end in terms of the type of watch. This actually covers two different genres, the dive watch as well as the traveler's watch. Some key common characteristics in the language you're looking for a diver, you're gonna want a uh, water resistance to some type of screw down crown. You're going to want something that's tough, legible with a dive time bezel and a dive extension is always nice if on bracelets. In terms of something uh, of a traveler's watch, you're gonna want, of course, a GMT or world timer functionality. So you're able to track multiple time zones with relative ease. This is the Prospex SPB383 Marine Master 200 GMT. And it's a modern reinterpretation of Seiko's original 1968 Marine Master Diver, uh, which, which was actually their first high beat diver as well as being their first saturation diver. Uh, but now it's actually featuring Seiko's latest Collar GMT with a three-day power reserve. These go for $1,500 MSRP, or you can buy this particular unit, brand new from Belmont Watches in San Diego for only $1,325. So nice uh, little discount there. Also, if you were to purchase this, it would be this exact unit that's featured. So when it comes to the bezel alignment, you know that it's, it's there because you can see it right now. Even fighting against the parallax effect, uh, you know, when you're recording something, you're looking at it at different angles, I will say this one lines up perfectly. And if I was in the market for one of these, this would be the level of alignment that would actually make me happy. Uh, so with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. Okay guys, so big shout out to Belmont Watches here in San Diego for lending this gorgeous piece in for me to share with you guys. Uh, brand new, you can see I had to peel back the wrapping just a little bit just to give you guys an idea of this bracelet because although I have reviewed quite a few other um, you know, uh, models within this kind of Marine Master 200 as well as Marine Master 300 kind of family lineage, you can see that they did update this bracelet. So this is actually a new bracelet. It's it's actually different from the other ones that you're gonna see on your other SPB kind of Marine Master 200s. Same thing with this bezel insert. Definitely has more of the style that you were used to be seeing in terms of something from their SLA line. So this is actually really elevated and I think that's one thing that goes very much overlooked when I've seen, you know, kind of other coverage of this particular piece um, is, is, you know, you don't necessarily get the emphasis on the fact that this thing really is turned up uh, in terms of the quality, the attention to detail. I have to say very, very impressed. And I liked the old bracelet, uh, but this one definitely just gives it a bit more refinement. Um, and, you know, with as busy as the dial combination, you know, having the, the, 24 hour scale as well as of course the fully indexed diving bezel um i think it's nice that they kind of softened and simple uh and kind of refined the clasp and bracelet aspect but with that let's actually jump into some of these details so 42 millimeters in diameter 13.2 millimeters thick, which is not too shabby, especially for a GMT. Of course, that hand stack is gonna add some extra height on to uh, you know any type of GMT, no matter how thin the movement is itself. So that's one thing to always consider. Now, uh, the lug to lug, 48.4 millimeters, and this is all stainless steel, and it is also uh, brushed and polished with Seiko super hard Dia Shield coating. Now, the sapphire crystal is flat with an AR coating and it works really well. As you guys can see, the uh, bezel is beautifully done, guys. Ooh. Buttery. Well dampened. Wow, really not a lot of play there. You can see it aligns absolutely perfectly. Let me give it just a couple of hits there and uh, just keep the dust off of it because uh, this thing is gorgeous. Now, the bezel insert itself, although it does have a very glossy ceramic-like look, it is not ceramic from my understanding. It is actually a coating um, of uh, ceramic type of material over a steel bezel. Uh, so that, that way it actually has a scratch resistance similar to ceramic, um, but also it's going to be harder and it will bend instead of 
of break or crack uh, if it was to get a shock. So that's my understanding. I know sometimes they have used um, actual ceramic bezel inserts, but as far as I know, that is in the cheaper models, which is very interesting, I think, to a lot of people. They'll find out that, you know, a King Turtle is using a basic ceramic insert, whereas the more elevated glossy uh, inserts are typically some type of lacquered coating uh, that may also contain, uh, you know, some elements and components of ceramic. Uh, there's not too much information about that published, um, so, you know, I just have to kind of give you what I get back and you know try to translate it to the best of my ability now um, in terms of this action very nice 120 click uh, you do get that loomed pip there although it is not shielded it is exposed um, which you can't be too mad at I love a good shielded loom pip but it does seem like on their higher end models they kind of tend to kind of go away from the shielded loom pips and they do end up doing exposed loom which means that you're just going to want to make sure to try to keep it clean uh, one of these white uh, erasers is going to work really good for stuff like that and you just ch -ch 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 -ch. so you can get these anywhere Amazon and uh, yeah that's just a little secret for you if you're ever worried about your exposed loom pip getting dusty getting dirty picking up some patina that doesn't suit maybe the rest of the dial and hand layout now, uh, the movement, although you can't see it, it's actually Seiko's new uh, 6R54 GMT movement, uh, as seen in actually my SPB411 uh, navigation timer reissue. Uh, it has a 72-hour power reserve, so that's a full three-day, which, you know, you can see they're also advertising that on the dial a bit there. Three hertz beat rate, which is not, uh, you know, surprising, with a 21600 vibration per hour, uh, you know, sweep there. So, very, very nice. Um, and then, in terms of the dial, itself you're gonna still be getting those rays into C's you're getting a sun ray kind of uh actually I'd say it's it's just pure matte there yeah it's a matte black dial with the date at about the four and a half o'clock you're getting brushed and polished hands there you can see really nicely finished you try to get it to kind of hit the other side so you can see it looks like they're dual finished one side brushed one side polished so depending on the reflection you're still going to have something that is going to be uh, quite legible for you right so that is always nice then getting into the loom it's going to be seiko's luma bright and this is a diver so it's going to be good uh, of course it has 200 meters of water resistance that are iso compliant you can tell because it says divers 200 meters so there's a lot of different things that go into those iso standards um but i will say that uh, clearly seiko has been historically known to use those tests which means uh, even testing above um you know to ensure that everything's good to go so even 25 percent deeper uh they'll still be good to go now the lugs are 20 millimeters and it has a nice taper from 20 down to 17 and a half in this rounded three link style this is going to have a pin and color construction in terms of the connecting system and then it is fully solid though which is nice solid link solid end links drilled lugs uh, beautifully done and you guys can see this case finishing beautiful that bezel finishing is definitely up another notch or so from your standard three hand look at that uh, just very very dynamic i really do also enjoy that uh slanted um chapter ring there for the 24 hour scale really beautifully integrated and very well balanced you know there's a lot of information on the dial um, and i think it all looks good and they invite you to even look for misalignment by having all this stuff and it is pretty impressive when you have all these points that could be misaligned and they're still aligned pretty darn good to my eye uh, you're not getting anything special in terms of the clasp it's going to be kind of standard affair there it is milled which is great twin trigger and then the flip lock and then of course you do get this little uh, handy divers extension once you know how to use it it's much easier of course whoops oh, i guess it's kind of hard to do with the uh, clasp closed which makes sense so you do that you just pop this forward and then that's going to lurch forward and then boom so you can go right over that divers uh, suit and get that nice and secure so really beautifully done uh, you do have four positions of micro adjust here and this is going to have all of the links in and everything like that so this is going to fit really well on the wrist as a matter of fact let's actually get this on the wrist and see how it wears all right guys as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist this just looks immaculate of course it's not sized and i do have 
the a little bit peeled back here just so you guys can see how everything flows uh, but the eventual owner of this piece will have the uh, fun ASMR honor of peeling these all the way back uh, but yeah it looks great of course if I do get my wrist a bit too close to the camera lens you're gonna get some perspective distortion and it's gonna seem a bit more oversized um, than it actually is but you can see here the side profile just the way that it drapes there's really no way that uh, the camera can even throw, throw or distort that because it's just so ergonomically thought out and it's just whew, they do a great job with that but what I'll do is I'll keep my wrist nice and low here and then just tighten up the frame so that you guys can get uh, you know still a detailed look but just in a bit of a truer aspect ratio in terms of how this may sit on your own wrist actually let me just step it back a little there you go Check that out, really nicely centered. And of course I do have a larger than average wrist at seven and a half inches, but you can see it's also relatively round. So it's not flat and really wide and super accommodating to any type of watch. I'm still somebody who does have to pay attention to that lug to lug and the general case proportions when it comes to, uh, you know, how things are really going to feel on the wrist. And man, this is just, it, it has such a great premium feel and a lot of it has to do with that bezel insert and the bezel grips there. It just ties in. And I mean, I was already impressed. And also, I guess I should add in that that crown is very, very nicely done. A bit more aggressive. Um, and of course, a little bit more reminiscent of some of their higher end offerings, whether they be, you know, in the SLA range or even some of the Prospects LX spring drive, uh, you know, powered models with a similar uh, aesthetic there. So, it's really, really great to see this. Ooh, man, look at that transition from brush to polish. That is where just Seiko is so hard to compete with for other brands. That level of finishing, that crispness in that edge and that line and that transition, really, even at these price points, guys, even if you were to pay full retail at 1500 bucks, it would be challenging for you to find a $1,500 full retail. I'm not saying you can't find a more expensive watch at a gray market cost that's lower than $1,500, but one that where the actual retail list price is $1,500 that is going to have a finer case finishing than this. I mean, it is absolutely immaculate. And look at the ergonomics in terms of how those undercuts just make that thinness so evident. Uh, I really, really dig that. So with that said, let's actually get this off the wrist, set up for some loom shots, low light transition, and closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Yes, as you can see, a Seiko diver just will not be denied even when you add the extra complication of also being a GMT watch. Man, look at that seconds hand just chugging along there really, really beautifully, guys. But one thing I always like to work in is a bit of a low light transition because you're always going to be out in the field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it is nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting. So maybe include a bit of harsh lighting, which simply could expose any types of production defects. But all you're gonna see here, of course, is maybe a little bit of dust stuck to the stickers. And, uh, you know, maybe something that didn't get blown off by the little air squirter there. But man, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. The play between the matte dial, the glossy, uh, you know, deep bezel insert, as well as those high, highly finished um, polished sections there of the case with those sharp transitions. It all just juxtaposes itself in such a beautiful way. Just such a deep luster, guys. Look at the polished bevels on those lugs. My goodness. And of course, that nice clean satin brush, nicely matted, and that nice matte black dial, which is going to render pretty true in terms of it being black. There's not a lot of times where depending on the, you know, the lighting situation, maybe you get a hint, a flash of, uh, you know, a bit of a more warmth or an anthracite type of colorway. It's just going to pretty much render black in almost all lighting conditions, which I can really appreciate, man. I mean, don't even think about the fact that you might have this underwater as well. Uh, and you might need some, uh, some nice 
legibility and visibility, check that out. It still looks fantastic. And you can keep track of that secondary time zone with the GMT hand. So maybe if you were going to uh, make a call uh, back to Japan or back to the US, depending on where you're visiting at the time or where you're staying at, uh, you'll have that extra bit of information. And the nice thing is you're not sacrificing any functionality because you still have the ability to still quick adjust your date, which is a huge plus and you don't really realize you miss it until it's gone when you start getting into the world of travelers, GMTs, where you start jumping the hour, but then that's how you have to set the date. And if you haven't worn the watch in a while, you're gonna be cycling through a couple of days at a time and it's just gonna get really old really fast for most people's use cases. So, oh man, what a looker guys. But let's go ahead, get this going here. Closing thoughts on the wrist, really great fitment guys. It does feel a touch more balanced than that classic Marine Master 300, right? Because of that thinner case profile, but still taking advantage of all those same great tricks that ergonomically and stylistically just make this silhouette stand out as something that is really innate to the core of Seiko's design language. Now, this also feels more premium than your average three hand six R powered SPB model uh, to include, of course, the uh, Marine Master 200 lines uh, that are not limited in any way. Um, and then you get into those limited models, right? Some of them are ever brilliant steel and you know, some of them have higher end movements. You're talking about in the SLA range. Um, this feels more closer to those watches than it does, let me just, Sorry about that, there we go. This actually feels closer to those more expensive models versus it's more, uh, you know, affordable entry level kind of brethren. So that's really impressive when you think about that bezel insert, that bezel grip, that, uh, of course, that crown. There's just a certain level of beefiness and a bit of more of an overbuilt nature, but still super clean, super crisp, and just, uh, you know, ultimately just feels technically capable while tying into some of those just, you know, nice uh execution levels that seiko and grand seiko um, have just been really so well regarded for now in terms of model variants this is also available in a green on green or a gray on blue colorway from seiko but this is the one that you can get for a really nice discount from uh you know the guys over at belmont watches so i think that's awesome Great guys, great price guys. And of course this one, again, if you buy this one, you know that the bezel lines up because you saw me just do it. <laughs> so in terms of comparable models, I'd say the best way to think of that about this is this is gonna out heritage similar micro brands in terms of other ones that are maybe using a Seiko movement or a Miyota movement uh, or a Swiss movement for that fact. It would probably be even closer um, because the, you know now the Miyota GMT is actually a um, <clears throat> a traveler's style flyer GMT, right, with a jumping hour hand. Now we compare this to let's say some watches within the Swatch group or outside of the Swatch group that are going to be using more standard kind of ETA collar style movements or Sleeta movements. Um, then yeah, this is right up there with, I mean, that's a very close comparable, but where it's going to differ is this is going to out in house those, right? Like, the in-house, the vertical integration, the fact that Seiko is producing down to the jewels, the lube, the crystals, they're growing those all in-house and those are all their in-house products. Uh, that's just outstanding, right? So it's, it's I think on both ends of the spectrum, it's going to be really a value add, which is fantastic. So for me guys, bottom line, this has all of Seiko's in-house qualities packed into an iconic diver silhouette and now with the bonus of a GMT hand as well as a full three day power reserve. So it took something that was already great, that I was already you know a huge fan of, and they just added so much extra functionality while also upping the uh, overall package to make it feel like more than just, oh, well, I'm paying more for this movement, for this complication. You're paying more because this is a nicer watch. Like this is probably the best bang per buck, I would say, Marine Master type of watch. No, it doesn't have Marine Master on the dial, and I know that's a big point of contention for a lot of people, but in terms of that uh, 1968, uh, 6159 uh, saturation diver 
lineage and heritage, this is probably one of the best modern options you can have in terms of that sweet spot, right? In terms of the money that you're spending and all of the benefits you're receiving. So with that said, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you like the video, please do like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys. Oh,